Gripen was surrounded, then it proved why Sweden built it. In the grey skies above the Baltic, an old game is still being played, one of power, presence, and provocation. On one side, a superpower flaunts its dominance with four of the most advanced fighters in its arsenal. On the other, a single aircraft, smaller, lighter, outnumbered. The sky above the Baltic was quiet. A single fighter sliced through the pale northern air, its silhouette small, almost unassuming, compared to the giants it might one day face. It was the Saab Jas 39 Gripen Sweden's homegrown fighter jet, built not for glory, but for survival. The pilot checked his instruments, his patrol was routine, but then the calm broke. Radar warnings screamed to life, multiple contacts closing fast, for hostile aircraft locked onto his position. Heavy twin-engine interceptors the kind designed to crush smaller foes with overwhelming numbers. The Gripen were surrounded, outnumbered 4 to 1, with nowhere to run. At least, that's what the enemy believed. What they didn't know was that this moment, this exact scenario, was the reason the Gripen existed at all. Sweden had built it for this. To fight outnumbered, to fight on its own terms, to fight and survive when the giants closed in. To understand why this little jet could hold its own against monsters twice its size, you need to go back in time. The Cold War had frozen Europe, to the west NATO, to the east the Soviet Union, and in between, nations like Sweden, neutral on paper, but fully aware that neutrality alone would not save them. Sweden's geography was its curse and its shield. A long coastline stretched into the Baltic Sea, close to Soviet territory. If war broke out, Sweden knew it would never have the luxury of time. Airfields would be bombed in the opening hours. Jets would be hunted, outnumbered, outgunned, overwhelmed. So Swedish planners asked themselves, how does a small nation survive when surrounded by giants? The answer was radical. They would not try to match superpowers plane for plane. They would not pour billions into massive heavy jets like the Americans or the Soviets. Instead, they would design an air force that could scatter, hide, survive, and strike back from the shadows. The solution was called Bus 90, instead of relying on big, vulnerable air bases. Sweden built a secretive network of hidden road bases. Sections of highways were reinforced and prepared to serve as runways. Fuel and weapons were hidden in camouflaged depots deep in the forest. If war came, Sweden's jets would scatter across the countryside. They would land on rural roads, refuel, rearm, and take off again in minutes. Imagine this, a fighter jet screaming down a tree-lined highway, taking off between farmhouses and forests. That was not science fiction. That was Swedish reality. But to make it work, Sweden needed a fighter that could do what American and Soviet jets could not. It had to be small, agile and rugged. It had to land on 800 meters of road, less than the length of a single highway stretch. It had to be turned around in 10 minutes by a team of just six conscripts with a toolbox. The jet became the JAS-39 Grip. Look at a Gripen next to a Russian Su-35 or an American F-15, and it looks tiny, but that's the point. The Gripen was never meant to be a heavyweight slugger. It was meant to be the ultimate survivor. Cheaper to build and maintain, yet reliable enough to operate in the harsh Swedish climate, giving it extreme agility, able to outturn larger jets in close combat, while also taking off and landing in very short distances, keeping costs low, fuel efficiency high, and allowing Sweden to field more fighters instead of fewer. Every piece of its avionics and software was designed to be upgraded quickly, without building an entirely new jet. While superpowers designed fighters to show dominance, Sweden designed Gripen to show resilience. But Gripen's true power was not just in how it flew. It was in how it thought. On paper, the Gripen had no chance. But war is not one on paper. The Gripen's cockpit was not just a seat with controls, it was a nerve center of electronic warfare. Sweden invested heavily in something most countries ignored at the time, data links. Gripen's flying information could share radar pictures, targeting information, and threat warnings instantly. One th Gripen could keep its radar silent while another scanned the skies making the entire group invisible, yet fully aware, and then came its electronic warfare suite. Jammers, countermeasures, decoys tools that could make the Gripen disappear from enemy radar screens, or appear where it wasn't. In a fight, the enemy might never realize how close the Gripen was until it was too late. Now began the climax. The radar signals sharpened. Four hostile aircraft closed their formation, heavy twin-engine fighters bristling with missiles, raw power, and intimidation. The Gripen pilot stayed calm. This was nothing new. Every Swedish fighter pilot was trained with the assumption that they would always be outnumbered. The Gripen screens lit up with data. Some of it wasn't even coming from his own radar, it was being fed from elsewhere, from ground stations, from other Gripens flying silently, unseen, dozens of kilometers away. While the enemy thought they were hunting a lone jet, the truth was different. The Gripen was never alone. The enemy locked on missiles streaked into the sky, chasing the tiny Swedish jet. The Gripen's pilot pulled hard, the aircraft twisting with the agility of a bird startled from a branch. The Delta Canard design bit into the air, bleeding speed, trading momentum for survival. Countermeasures flared, electronic jammers screamed into the ether. 
On the enemy's radar, the Gripen flickered then vanished. Confusion set in. Where had it gone? This was the dance the Gripen was designed for. Not brute force. Not overwhelming firepower. But vanishing, reappearing, and striking when least expected. The Gripen is small, but it carries a sharp sting. Its primary air-to-air -air weapon is the Meteor Missile, a beyond-visual-range weapon with a ramjet engine. Unlike most missiles, which coast after launch, Meteor can keep thrusting, adjusting, hunting its target deep into the fight. In a duel of reach, Meteor outranges almost everything the Gripen might face, even the much larger Russian or American missiles, and in close combat, the Gripen carries Iris-D, or Sidewinder's heat-seeking missiles that can be fired off boresight, locking onto a target almost anywhere the pilot looks with his helmet sight. The Gripen may not carry as many missiles as a Su-35 or an F-15, but when every shot is smarter, every missile counts for more. Back to the battle. The Gripen rolled low, hugging the deck, disappearing against the backdrop of the Baltic coastline. The enemy fighters spread out, trying to box it in, but in spreading out, they gave the little jet what it needed most, opportunity. From miles away, another Gripen fed targeting data into the ambushed pilot systems. He didn't need to light up his own radar. To the enemy, he was invisible. BHE pulled the trigger. A media missile leapt from under his wing. By the time the hostile aircraft realized they were being tracked, the missile was already closing at blistering speed. One of the four blips vanished from the Gripen's display. The odds had shifted. Four to one became three to one. It might seem insane that a country like Sweden, small in size, modest in population would build a jet to take on the likes of Russia or the United States. But the Gripen isn't about matching them blow for blow. It's about turning weakness into strength. Where a Russian Su-35 is huge, with long range and powerful engines. It also burns fuel quickly, requires long runways, and needs large support crews. The grip pin it can sip fuel economically, take off from a highway, and be rearmed by conscripts in minutes, where an American F-35 boasts stealth shaping and advanced sensors. It also comes at an astronomical cost. The grip pin can be built, operated, and upgraded for a fraction of the price, meaning Sweden, and its export customers, can actually afford enough of them to matter. And unlike the Eurofighter or Rafale, which were designed as prestige projects, the Gripen was born from cold practicality. We will be outnumbered. We must be smarter. We must survive. For Swedish pilots, survival wasn't a backup plan, it was the doctrine. They trained to disperse, to vanish, to rely on quick strikes and immediate relocation. If one highway was bombed, another could be used. If one base was destroyed, dozens more were waiting. Gripen wasn't just an aircraft, it was a system of survival. Even its cost was a weapon. While Russia and the US poured billions into fighters so expensive they could only afford limited numbers, Sweden built a jet that was affordable enough to be fielded in real numbers. One Gripen may not scare a superpower, but dozens, scattered, hidden, surviving every first strike. That was the nightmare scenario for any invader. The remaining enemy fighters closed in again. Their size and power dwarfed the Gripen, but they couldn't pin it down. Every time they locked, it slipped away. Every time they thought they had the angle it wasn't there. Then another missile warning lit up. Another meteor in the sky. The hostile flight broke formation, scattering, each pilot suddenly aware that they weren't hunters anymore. They were prey in someone else's trap. The Gripen pilot never shouted, never panicked. His training was clear, calm, precise, methodical. The very traits Sweden had designed into the machine itself. One of the attackers tried to close for a gun's kill. The Gripen rolled, cutting inside with brutal agility, its canards biting the air like claws, an iris -D screamed off the rail. Another enemy vanished, from four to two. The battle was no longer a hunt. It was survival turning into dominance. The Gripen embodies something few other fighters do. The spirit of the underdog. It doesn't win because it's the biggest, fastest, or most expensive. It wins because it's designed for the harsh reality of being outnumbered. Every design choice short takeoffs, quick turnarounds, modular upgrades, advanced data links came from the knowledge that Sweden could never build thousands of fighters. Instead, it built one fighter that could outthink, outlast, and outfight in the moments that mattered most and in the Baltic skies, surrounded, hunted, and pressed to the edge, that spirit came alive. To truly understand what makes the Gripen remarkable, you have to compare it to the giants of the skies. First, the Sukhoi Su-35, a beast of Russian engineering, twin engines thrust vectoring nozzles, immense power, it can carry more missiles, fly further, and climb faster than a Gripen ever could. On paper the Su-35 should crush Sweden's little fighter, but that power comes at a cost. It requires large, well-prepared air bases. Its massive engines guzzle fuel at astonishing rates. Its maintenance demands are heavy. And in a world where every sortie matters, the Su-35 risks being too big, too hungry, too dependent on fragile infrastructure. Then there's the F-35 Lightning II, America's crown jewel. Stealth, sensors, and networked power. But each jet costs well over $100 million. Operating it is even more expensive. 
For the price of a single F-35, Sweden could field multiple Gripens, scatter them across road bases, and still have money left to maintain them. The Eurofighter Typhoon and the Dassault Rafale are closer in philosophy, agile, advanced, capable of multi role operations. But even they are more complex, more expensive, less optimized for survival under pressure. And then there's the legendary F-16 Fighting Falcon, cheap, reliable, battle-proven. In many ways, the F-16 was to the Cold War what Gripen is today, a small fighter built to fight smarter, not bigger. But where the F-16 is now showing its age, Gripen remains fresh, with modern avionics modular upgrades, and an electronic warfare suite that is second to none. The giants dominate headlines. The Gripen dominates when reality bites. The Gripen turned hard, its pilot feeling the G-forces pressing him into the seat. Two enemy fighters remained. They were cautious now, wary of the small jet that had already claimed half their formation. But they were still dangerous. Their radars probed the sky, searching for the faintest trace. The Gripen pilot kept low hugging the landscape, using every fold of terrain to mask his movements. The Baltic coast blurred beneath him. Then, with a flick of a switch, his sensors came alive not to reveal himself, but to blind them. His electronic warfare suite poured noise and deception into the air, scrambling enemy radars, creating ghosts on their screens. One enemy pilot swore under his breath. The target he thought he had locked onto dissolved into static. Another blip appeared where nothing should be. The Gripen wasn't just fighting, it was rewriting the battlefield itself. What made this possible wasn't just the machine, it was the philosophy behind it. Sweden's defense doctrine was never about prestige, it was about calm precision. Gripen pilots train not for glory but for survival. They are taught to remain methodical, unemotional, detached even in the most desperate situations, where others might panic under pressure. A Swedish pilot trusts the system, trusts the design, trusts the doctrine drilled into them since training began. This mindset mirrors the Gripen itself, not flashy, not imposing, but precise, efficient, relentless in its purpose. The two remaining fighters closed the net. They had speed, size, and numbers. But they didn't realize the trap had already been set. Another Gripen miles away unseen, fed its radar data silently into the ambushed pilot's cockpit. The enemy was focused on the wrong place. The Swedish pilot lined up his shot. Another Meteor missile launched, invisible until it was too late. One enemy down, only one remained. The hunter was now the hunted. It's easy to dismiss the Gripen as small, as modest. But in an age where air power is dominated by billion-dollar programs, the Gripen proves something powerful. Survival and adaptability matter more than size or prestige. For small nations, the Gripen is a symbol that you don't need unlimited budgets to stand your ground. For Sweden, it is proof that neutrality does not mean helplessness. And for any pilot who dares underestimate it, the skies themselves hold the reminder the Gripen may be small. But it was built for moments just like this. The last enemy fighter circled back, determined to take the Swedish jet down. The Gripen's pilot steadied his breathing. He had played this scenario a thousand times in training. The two aircraft danced across the sky, twisting, turning, each trying to gain the advantage. The enemy's power was undeniable thrust vectoring, speed, brute force. But every time he thought he had the angle, the Gripen slipped away. Its small frame, its canards, its agility all designed for this exact moment. The fight tightened into a spiral. Missiles were gone, guns remained. The Gripen rolled, cut inside, and suddenly the enemy was in his sights. A squeeze of the trigger, cannon fire tore through the air. The final enemy vanished from the display, from four to one, now one to none. The Gripen had survived, no more than that. It had triumphed. The skies grew quiet. Smoke trails faded into the Baltic air. What had begun as a lopsided hunt ended as a stunning reversal. The Gripen, the smallest fighter on the battlefield, had survived against overwhelming odds. It hadn't done so by sheer speed or brute force. It had done so by being smarter, nimbler, and designed for the very situation it had just endured. The pilot leveled out. Com, breathing over the radio. To him, this was not heroism. This was doctrine. This was Sweden's design philosophy proving itself in the real world. The Gripen story is more than a battle in the sky. It's a reminder that in life, just like in combat, being outnumbered doesn't mean being defeated. With the right design, the right mindset, and the courage to fight smarter, even the smallest can bring down giants. If you felt the power of that story, don't just watch and move on, hit subscribe, join our crew, and be here when we tell the next untold story of survival and triumph. Because the skies are full of legends, and this is just the beginning.